We are in the book of Philippians. When chapter 3 of Philippians, also Paul writes to the believers in Philippi, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Very good advice. Very good advice. Outside of Christ and his word, his pure words, there is not very much to rejoice about. In this earthly life, in this present evil world in which we live, we can be very grateful that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We are, we are very grateful indeed. <clears throat> Why? Because without Christ dying for our sins, without Christ getting buried and, and getting risen again the third day, as he promised he would. The Father rose him from the dead, he rose himself from the dead, the Spirit of God rose him <clears throat> from the dead, because the Godhead, <clears throat> the Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost are a work in every aspect of the Scriptures, and particularly in the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. That's a very important thing, because that seals your salvation, your eternal salvation. We tend to think, you know, after all, I'm not such a bad person. We tend to accuse and justify our own thoughts and action because we have the knowledge of good and evil in Adam. But the reality is, the scriptures is what tells you, tells us our condition. The reason why many people don't like to read the King James Bible is because this book is not very favorable to you as a man, as a member of mankind. This book tells that all have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are a sin. In that condition, lost, a child of wrath, a child of disobedience, it's very dark what is in front of you. Even if in this life you have, uh, you know, material position, possessions, blessings, the reality is, at the end of this life, you will go to hell. And then, at the end of the age, just to come. He will come out of hell and be brought to the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment where you're going to be judged according to your works. And you're going to be found guilty. And you're going to be cast in the lake of fire where there are even various levels of punishment according to what kind of sins what kind of life you lived in the flesh that's the reason why people don't like to read the bible because the bible tells you the truth it doesn't go flattering that god doesn't know for god doesn't care of your position in life you might be the president of united states of america or the roman pope the Queen or the King of England, the Prime Minister, the leader of Australia or Italy or any other country you want, you, you're nothing really. God is not a respecter of persons. Reading this book, you learn that there are only two positions. Either you're in Christ, saved and sealed by grace and destined to heavenly places to be with the Lord, or you are in Adam lost and on your way to hell and the lake of fire. So the reason why the Apostle Paul says, finally, my brethren, so he's talking to believers, saved and sealed believers in Philippi, rejoice in the Lord because there is reason to rejoice. You are saved. You are sealed because Jesus Christ atoned for his sins. 
Jesus Christ did something. When I say Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you and I and nobody could do. Save your soul. And the Holy Ghost of God has sealed you in Christ. And the Lord, the Father said that you are accepted in the beloved. When you believe, simply believe and receive the gospel of Christ. Without works on your part, you know. Not before, not even after. Because some people think, oh, okay, you know, I can get saved without works at the beginning. But then I got to do the works, really. That's not what the King James Bible tells us. There is, there is none, none, one, no, no, even one. In the Old Testament says this, and even in the letters of Paul, in Romans chapter 3, it tells you very clearly. There is none that does good. No, not one. So, so if you have believed <coughs> and received the gospel of the cross, the gospel of Christ, then you're saved, then you're sealed, so rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Say, but what do you mean, you know, always the same thing? <laughs> The Spirit of God is speaking here. Yes. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. We need to be reminded constantly who the Lord is, what the Lord has accomplished in creation and in salvation. It's wonderful program for the nation of Israel, the earthly program, and his heavenly <coughs> program, sorry. His heavenly program for the body of Christ. That's what happens when you're an old man. <laughs> uh, we need to be constantly reminded that our salvation is the operation of God, that we cannot add anything, neither diminish anything from what Christ has accomplished. If we do that, it is to our own damage. We don't damage God. God is perfect, infallible, the Almighty God. We need to be reminded, we are the sinners, Christ is the Savior. When we believe in the Gospel of Christ, now we are the members of the body of Christ. The body of Christ didn't exist in the Old Testament. It didn't exist even when the Lord Jesus was in, the, in his earthly ministry. You don't find the body of Christ in the book of Matthew, Luke, uh, Mark, Luke and John and the four Gospels. The body of Christ begins with the saving and the calling of the Apostle Paul in Acts 9, and is a new reality, is a new, is a new body, is a revelation of the mystery, something that was hidden God for ages upon generation and now has been revealed to his own apostles and prophets by the Spirit. God had a mystery. He was going to save Jews and Gentiles alike, men and women. <laughs> Who, on the basis of what Christ has accomplished, and they simply believe it and receive it. Form this new body, this new creature who is going to reign with Christ in heavenly places, when all these principality, powers, dominions, and thrones of darkness are dispossessed, and the Lord will give positions to the members of the body of Christ for the heavenly places. In the meantime, he will come back to earth and will restore his earthly people, Israel, which at the moment is not safe, <clears throat> which at the moment is in a condition of law am I, not my people. There is no Israel of God on earth. There is Jewish religion, but Jewish religion doesn't save anybody. It's just another religion, very oppressive and legalistic. Everybody, everywhere, 
Nisu here. The word of truth, rightly divided. The Nisu here. The glorious gospel of Christ. Paul said in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation <clears throat> for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Yes, it is safe. Thank you, Lord. Verse 2, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of, of the concision. Dogs, evil workers, concision. So it's not talking about the dogs, the animals. You know. Who are these dogs? Once upon a time, we were. In Ephesians 2 11, it says, Paul says, Remember them, you know, at that time, time passed, time passed. I'll go there because in this moment, my memory is not helping me, and I don't want to say something different from what the Word of God says. 2 11. Ephesians 2. Yeah. Wherefore, remember that ye, is it plural? The Ephesians, the Philippians, the Colossians, the Thessalonians, that ye be in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, <clears throat> but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We were Gentile dogs. But now things have changed. Why? Because now the dogs are the Judaizers, the circumcision. He says, beware of dogs. What they were doing, these people? They were going among the great believers, the churches established by the Apostle Paul, by the power of the gospel of Christ, the work of the Spirit. <laughs> people that were working under, under grace, saved and kept by the power of God, and they were saying, no, 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 no. You cannot. You cannot be saved by grace. Just believe it. Receive the gospel of Christ. You need to be circumcised. You need to obey the law. They did this with the Galatians. They were doing this everywhere. The Jews, with their Jewish religion, which doesn't save anyone now, they were tormenting. They were disturbing the work of the apostle constantly. Beware of dogs. We were, but we are no more. We are now children of God by grace. By grace. Remember when Jesus with the Canaanite woman she had, you know, she was a, a woman from Canaan, Tyre, Sidon, Tyre, Sidon, whatever, you know. She was not a part of Israel. She was not of the 12 tribes. She saw the Lord. She said, you know, uh, Lord, son of David, you know, my, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, please, you know. And the Lord didn't answer a word. And the disciples said, send her away. She's just pestering us, you know, paraphrasing. She said, Lord, you know, and, and, and what the Lord Jesus said is that, you know, it's not, it's not lawful to do this. It's not, the healing, deliverance is for the, is the bread of the children, the children of Israel, according to covenant. But she said, yes, yes. But the dogs, because, you know, eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. So she blessed Israel and so she came under the blessing of Abraham when the Lord said to Abraham, those who bless thee, I will bless those who curse thee, I will curse. And the Lord said, a woman, great is thy faith, be done as, as you said, you know. The great is thy faith because she believed the word of God. That's what it is. It's not a question that she was, I don't know, some 
giant in the faith like people think you know you need to be a giant you need to simply believe what is written in the book simple as that beware of dogs beware of evil workers they work but it's but the the work is evil they knock at your door and said we are Jehovah witnesses we are mormons we are roman catholic we are methodist Pre presbyterian uh, Episcopalian, Methodist, uh, Baptist, uh, Pentecost, they give you all these names, these labels, they all have one prophet, one book, always adding, they don't have the King James Bible, they don't even believe what is written, they, most of them don't believe that Jesus is God, others believe that you need to speak in tongues, otherwise your salvation is not sure, yeah. No, no, we don't need anything. We need simply to believe and receive without works whatsoever, the work of God, what Christ has accomplished. And Paul says, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, circumcision, the Judaizers, Torah keepers, uh, Hebrew roots, truthers, kingdom gospel preachers, we are not in the dispensation of the kingdom. The kingdom, the kingdom will come in the future. At the moment, is on the back burner. Let's put it like this: it's on hold. It's been postponed because Israel, the earthly people to whom the Lord Jesus came in His earthly ministry, when He said, "I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the other Israel." That's Matthew 15, 24. Israel had to reject the king in the kingdom. So the Lord postponed this program and went on following the purpose that he had to create the body of Christ. It's not plan B. The body of Christ, the mystery, was it in God before the foundation of the world. It's something that the divine counsel of the God that has decided plan, purpose, is an eternal purpose. Read attentively. Don't don't fall. Oh, you know, because Israel failed. So now Israel is finished, and the Lord creates a church, and the church takes the place of Israel. No, that's replacement theology, they call it. No, 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 no. Israel is still Israel, the 12 tribes. At the moment, there is no Israel of God. But after that, the body of Christ, the new creature, gets caught up. To meet the Lord in the air, the Lord will come back at the end of the seven year tribulation. We restore his earthly people and will establish his, earth, his earthly kingdom 1000 years. And Israel will be again the city on the hill, the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Because the, the better covenant or the second covenant, Jeremiah 31 31, will take uh, effect at that time. The Lord will put His Spirit in their hearts and will cause them to walk in, uh, in His laws, in His statutes, something that Israel never been able to do before. <laughs> and people think you can do this now. That's ridiculous. It's sheer ignorance of the Scriptures. Don't get offended. God doesn't want you to be ignorant. God desires that we all get saved the will of God in this dispensation of grace, He will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But how are we going to come to the knowledge of the truth, my dear friend, if we don't read and study the pure words of God, the King James Bible? If you go around with the new King James Bible, ESV, NSB, all these perverted versions, eh? perversions, there are 2,000 and more, and they continue printing for a question of copyright to make money. You will never find the correct, the, the, the preserved, the infallible, pure words of God in those. So you need a King James Bible, you need to study the word of truth, rightly dividing it. Second Timothy chapter 2, 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun vain and profane babblings because well, they will increase unto more ungodliness. 
Beware of dogs, beware of your works, beware of concision. Why, Paul? Why? For we are the circumcision. Oh, oh, so we are Israel. No, 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 no. <clears throat> we have received the circumcision of Christ. No, Christ uh, on the eighth day was circumcised like a Jewish boy because Christ was born under the law. Okay? It's the operation of God when we believe the gospel, the Spirit of God circumcised, cuts off the body of the sins of the flesh from your spirit. Your spirit is saved, is sealed, is complete. Is perfect. <clears throat> Your body needs redemption if we receive it, a new glorified body. But in the meantime, while you walk, you need to learn how to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh, because the flesh is still an enemy. The enemy is not people. We don't have a you know spiritual warfare against flesh and blood. Our enemies are spiritual entities of, of darkness, but also is our flesh that very easily goes with that because we were born in Adam and we have been used in the course of our life <clears throat> before salvation to just follow the flesh. But Jesus said, you know, when I said Jesus said, that's the word of God incarnated. So it's God speaking, all right? Not only the man, Jesus, also the Jesus, the God, the second person of the Godhead, the Word incarnated, he said, the flesh profits nothing. What about that? The words I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. Now Jesus speaks his word from Genesis to Revelation because it's always the word of God. Every word is a word of God. It needs to be rightly divided. And now Jesus speaks to us from heaven through the Apostle Paul. People uh, don't know Paul. They think he's a servant of the, the Twelve. He's a missionary for Peter, James, and John. Forget it. God is not confused. You're confused because you listen to your local pastor or priest or bishop or even the Pope in Rome. Listen to the Word of God. Right, you're divided. The Word of Truth. Paul says, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit. What did Jesus say in, in John 4 to the Samaritan woman? God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And now this has happened, praise God. Not by our capacity, power, blah, blah, blah. We worship God in the spirit. Our spirit is worship God now. Our flesh, not really. Our flesh cannot worship God. You can present yourself to God, you know, now they a living sacrifice because it's Christ in you, the living sacrifice. It's not you. <laughs> to serve him, how do you serve him? Preach the word, that's it. But not the word of the denomination so and so, of the Bible school so and so. The pure words of God as it is written. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. What do you want to rejoice in? In Christ Jesus our Lord, the Savior, Redeemer, the head of the body. Jesus Christ our Lord is a wonderful, glorious person. You can study the prophetic aspect of Christ and the mystery revealed now of Christ and you're gonna come out with such a glorious, you know, explanation, the image of God, you know, Christ himself, you know, it's glorious. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And what happens? Christianity by large. I don't know. I don't want to be... I'm not talking to put down anybody. Whatever it's called, the denominations, what they do? They worship God 
in the flesh. In reality, they wash themselves and they program. Because their mind is carnal and is following the flesh, thinking that God is pleased when we give the tithe. Some people say the tithe is God. Other people, the tithe belongs to God. And they don't even understand that the tithe is part of the law given to Israel. And if you tithe in this dispensation of grace in which we are now, you put yourself under the curse of the law. Because if you do the law, you have to do all the law. You can't do one bit. And by the way, the law has not been given to you. It's given to Israel. And you're not Israel. Oh, you can put a tally to whatever it is and, and have the seven, uh, the men or I in your room and, 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 and say a few words in Hebrew, Shalom, Shalom, you know. You're not a Jew. You were never a Jew and you would never be one. You're never part of the 12 tribes. You are a pretender if you think you are Israel now because on TV, Christian TV, you see these people that pray under the Talit and say, there is power. Blah, 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 blah. Stop these jokes. If we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul says in Romans 7, I want to go exactly with it as it is. I don't want to, once again, I need to trust the word and not so much my memory, yeah? In Romans 7, <laughs> 18, for I know that in me, and then in brackets, thank you Lord, because the Spirit is good, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. Oh, the religious person, the religious flesh says, no, I'm good. No, 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 no. <laughs> But I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. Yeah, I want to do the good thing. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Many people say, oh, you know, Paul wrote this when he was unsaved. No. He's talking, the verbs tells you, that is in my flesh, I know now. No, I knew. For to will is present now with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would that do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwells in me. Sin dwells in you. Yes in your flesh. I find then a law. That when I would do good evil is present with me. <laughs> That's another law. That's not the law of Moses, you understand? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And then he cries out in verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am. You know, wretched? My pronunciation must be horrible. You know, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Thank God he doesn't say what. Because if you have to say what, all this system that they seven steps, 14 steps, 21 steps, 35 steps, 42 steps to live a victorious Christian life that they promote according to the flesh would be there and all the denominations say, I'll, I'll give it away, I'll give who? And you cannot substitute this because those who is Christ. In fact, it says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the Lord God. But with the flesh, the Lord sin. This is the reality. No, I used to serve past tense. I serve now. Yeah, who likes this? No, don't give me this, brother. I don't give you anything. I'll tell you as it is. 
The Lord is very, very good. The, God, the Lord is good and His goodness endures forever. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Not only praise the Lord Almighty God, He sent Christ and Christ came to save us, Israel, and us, the new creature, the body of Christ. He gave us also this apostle. Acts 9.15 says, Jesus said to Ananias, who was a kingdom gospel believer, who was afraid to meet with Paul of Tarsus, the persecuted, the injured, the blasphemer. Jesus said, go that way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name to Gentiles. Thank you, Lord Almighty God. God always wants to save us. God wants everybody saved, Jews and Gentiles, and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name. You know, in other words, it's not going to be easy. But my grace is going to be with this man. We learn with Paul. We study, or I personally love to do this study from Genesis to Revelation, 70 books. Because the book of Psalms is five books. So if you can't, probably there are 70 books, not 66. And I go with that because I love it. Seven is the number of God multiplied by 10, 70 books. Very important, the book of Acts, a transition from the prophetic to the new thing that God is doing with the Apostle Paul. And, and then the 13 letters, Romans of Philemon, the revelation of the mystery and the doctrine, the sound mind and so forth, the mind of Christ. God is good. He gave us the Apostle Paul, who is the Apostle, is a chosen vessel unto him, is the Apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. He put him in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. He calls this gospel that he preaches, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of Christ 11 times, the gospel of the cross. He calls it my gospel three times, and our gospel when he's together with Timothy, Silvanus, and Timothy three times. have no confidence in the flesh but you know <laughs> it's a warfare in flesh you, you wake up in the morning every morning you make a choice you are saved if you have believed and received nothing change your salvation is eternal thank you lord for that we are sealed with the holy spirit of promise in Ephesians 1 13 until the day of the redemption of the first possession unto the praise of his glory okay but every morning you wake up you may choose i'm gonna walk after the spirit According to the word of God, oh, yeah, I'll just let myself go. I mean, following my flesh. And if you are honest, if you don't pretend to be holier than thou and put yourself on a pedestal and look down on your brethren and sisters, you know that that's the truth. Oh, not me. I'm a pastor. What do you mean, pastor? He gave those ministries. Now we are all ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5. We're part of the new creature. We are ministers of reconciliation with the word of reconciliation. We need all to learn and give out this glorious gospel. Maybe, you know, you haven't got the time, but find some time. Maybe all you can do is just tell people, Believe, receive the gospel of Christ, that by resurrection. Explain to them that they lost, they need this glorious salvation, and God gives it as a free gift. Don't go in funny doctrines. And then Paul says, just to give an idea, in verse 4, we're in Philippians, okay? In chapter 3, in verse 4 now. Though I might have... Forgive my bad reading. I got problem with, with teeth, and this is not my language. So apologize. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Not this is provoking. It's a, provo pro a provoking thought, you know. You want them to think I might also. If any other man thinks that he has we're off. In my trust in the flesh, I more. Why? Why, Paul? Circumcised the hate day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, 
son of them on my right hand. And Hebrew of the Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Why was they persecuted the church? It was not persecuted by the Christ. It didn't exist. So start with him. He's the first and the part. The Jerusalem church. Because being a Pharisee, according to what he believed, Jesus was a false prophet and to be destroyed and the followers had to be destroyed according to the law. So he was a zealous for the tradition of his fathers, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. You see how the Pharisee can really exalt. <laughs> but then he says in verse 7, I love in verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I count or lost for Christ. When you truly know the Lord through his word, anything else is absolutely worthless. Yet yeah, doubtless, without doubt, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of, Je of Christ Jesus my Lord. I need to read slowly. I go too fast. For whom I suffer the loss of all things and do count them but dung. That I might win Christ. All this achievement, the, yeah, there's a Pharisee of the tribe of Dang! That I might win Christ. What is a contest? <laughs> and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Oh, mamma mia, I haven't got any. Which is of the law. In this case, Paul is saying, uh, righteousness of the law. As a Jew. We didn't have the law even. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So, the faith of Christ, for what I understand, but that which is through the faith of Christ is the righteousness which is of God by faith. I don't subscribe to the fact that Christ needed to have faith like I need to have faith or you need to have faith in him in his word in God because Christ was man fully man but he was also fully God <laughs> he's the everlasting God incarnated he's the man from heaven he's the new Adam He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the oh. Alpha and the Omega, the Messiah, King of Israel, and the head of the body of Christ. That I might know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made conformable unto his death. Reckoning yourself dead with Christ daily. It's not easy. It's a done deal from, God points, from God's point of view. Slow down, Robertino. But for me, it's a daily choice. If I don't, I don't lose salvation. Because salvation is the work of God, is the operation of God, it's done deal, unsaved, unsealed. But to walk with the Lord, in a way that is profitable for the, for the plan of God and also for the good of the life in Christ now for me is something I need to choose daily reckoning myself dead with Christ and alive unto God according to the operation of God if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of, of the dead is he afraid he's not going to be resurrected? No, 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 no. He says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if. That I might apprehend, that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So this is to know the Lord and the power of his resurrection. Brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, now that you say you can do, forgetting those things which are behind, 
or the program which was to and about Israel, prophetic program, the kingdom, and so forth, which is going to establish in the future. It's been interrupted, this program. We're in the ban now. There was time passed. We're in the ban now. And there are going to be ages to come after we get caught up. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, this is a saved man. He's not trying to get saved, but it is a, it's pressing for excellency. In fact, it says, Let's that, let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, what do we have already attained? Let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing, the mind of Christ. How can we mind the same thing unless we have the same doctrine? You put a Presbyterian and a Methodist and a, Pres and, and, and a Baptist and a Pentecostal and a Word of Faith and a Roman Catholic and an Orthodox and a, and a Puritan and a, they all start fighting and debating. We need to do this, not that. Uh, baptize in water, by measure, by spirit. When it, there is no even water baptism in the body of Christ now, we are baptized by the Spirit into the death of Christ for the sake of identification. And those guys, denominations, labels, they got one prophet, the different books, often books next to the, 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 the Bible, which most of the time is not King James Bible, the Book of Mormon, you know, the... I can go on and on and on. Let, let's forget it. They never have the same mind. You will have the same mind once you study the letters of Paul. You receive the, the teaching, the information. You never, to a point, I know it all. You see, learning daily. I learn daily. Besides the fact that, you know, I've been all my life in religion. It's only since 2011-12 that finally, finally, by the grace of God, I came to the gospel of grace, the revelation of the mystery, Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. So I'm still learning and I guess I'm going to be learning if I continue to study. Not that God is going to speak to me from heaven. You need to study, you need to read, study. On your own and together with people of the same mind. Eh? The letters of Paul. The King James Bible. And be in the right spirit and say, I don't know it all. I'm learning. And I want to learn according to the will of God. Not according to the will of this friend or that pastor to please them. Sometimes it's hard. But that's the way to go. Because we study to show ourselves approved unto God. And what are we? A workman. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Where are the judgment seat of Christ? Rather we divide in the word of truth. Which is the word of truth? First and foremost, the gospel. If you go on preaching, teaching the gospel of the kingdom now, you really are on another, on another program which is not God's program. God is not doing now what he used to do with the twelve with Jesus in his earthly ministry or what he will do in the future. God now is saving souls and wants the souls to be edified in the faith. The will of God, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Christ Jesus came in this world not to establish a denomination, a temporal power, all these churches, you know, budding each other, boo, 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 to save sinners. Praise be to God. And Paul says, I'm the first and the pattern. I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious, but I did ignorantly in unbelief. But I receive mercy. That's what we receive. Grace, mercy. And, we, and then we are pleased with God. Because we allow the Spirit of God to save us and seal us. 
by the power of the blood of Christ. Brethren, be followers together of me. <gasps> no, people say, I follow Jesus. Who is this Paul? Paul doesn't say follow me in the flesh. The teachings that Christ has given to him from heaven. The done deal operation of God, the glorious operation of God, the fact that God saves you, accepts, blesses you in Christ, not because of your works, but because of His mercy, grace, compassion, goodness. Because He puts you in the best of the best of the best, Christ. There is none like Christ Jesus. No in time past, no now, no in the age of Sukkot. He's the greatest. And God puts you in His only begotten Son, His beloved. That's why uh, Ephesians 1 6, we are accepted in the beloved. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in every place in Christ. Ephesians 1 3. We receive the forgiveness of all sins, past sins, present sins, future sins. That's Ephesians 1 7. It, it, that's uh, Galatians 1 14, Galatians 2 14, 2 13 14. A change of status from Adam into Christ. From, the, from Adam into, into the new Adam, the man from heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, a glorious God who gave himself. Oh, wow. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. Now, I'm not so sophisticated with English, but I, I know that there is an example and this is an ensemble. A living example. And in brackets, he cries as I for many walk, of whom I told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is the belly, whose glory is in the shame, who mind earthly things. In the book of Colossians, uh, you reason with Christ seek the things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God, not things on earth. This life is temporary. I'm already 74. Yesterday I was 18. Time flies. I'm here 74. By the grace of God, I should have been dead. I don't know how many times already for the, all the idiotic, stupid things I've done since I was a young man and even in the course of growing up to a mature man and this and that. I am not at all proud of my life before salvation. I'm very shameful. Ashamed. That is a shameful. Well, a shameful because shame of things, stupid things, idiotic things. But now things are different. I'm in Christ. God doesn't see me in that old man anymore. That man is dead. Dead with Christ, buried with Christ, risen with Christ, ascended with Christ, and praise be to God, seated with Christ already in heavenly places in Christ. And I'm here only as an ambassador, only to give glory to God, only to preach this gospel of grace. So you too, if you're not saved yet, can be saved, sealed, and enjoy eternal life serving the Lord in this glorious program that He has. In fact, it says in verse 20, for our conversation is in heaven. Can you imagine? I'm here in Fremantle, Western Australia. Even though you see the background, the book of Genesis, I, I'm uh, somewhere on, on this earth of God in Fremantle, Western Australia, with my body while I'm talking in this camera. But the reality is, is our conversation is in heaven. Conversation is not only talking, but living, our life is already there. From whence also we look for the Savior, the blessed hope. The Lord Jesus Christ, not to be saved again, we're already saved, to take us with Him, praise be to God, in, into heavenly places. And what is going to do when He comes? Who shall change a vile body? Wow! This body that we care so much, and look at me, you know, is a vile body. Vile? You understand the word vile? If you're English, you understand. And dust, 
people are grass, vanity, vanity of vanities, who shall change a bad body, that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even, he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And that's the end. 50 minutes. We thank you, Father God, Almighty God, Creator of the heaven and the earth, glorious God, Messiah King of Israel, Prince of Peace, the hope of Israel, but for us, the Lord, the Redeemer, the Savior of the body, the head of the body, the one where we adore and serve in spirit with the spirit, spirit and truth. We thank you, Father, that you gave us your pure words, King James Bible. We thank you for Christ, the Holy Spirit, for your love. God is love. And for the Apostle Paul. We thank you also for the 12 and the prophetic problem. We study, we see your faithfulness, your goodness, even though none of us, no Israel, no us has ever merited or earned anything but a, a sure ticket to hell and the leg of fire, but we give, you give us eternal life. If you haven't done it yet, please believe how the Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures, and there he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Thank you for listening. Grace and peace in Christ to all.